we should be good to go good to Gucci. And the game is starting once again, this time with proper UI. Final series, let's do this. Yep. Solar versus MC. Both players in the top 20 of the Korean Grandmaster ladder. And uh, MC rocking that uh, portrait with the evil guy from the campaign. I forget What's what his name is. I, I played the played campaign him, so. on Brutal for the first day it was out. and First two days it was out. And I don't even know any... Are person. you bragging about beating the Brutal campaign in no, two days? No, Dennis so? should be bragging. He beat Dennis it with just playing Stalkers. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, you said that it couldn't be done. I know. Yeah. He's a god. He is a He's god. He's a god amongst men. That he is. So, uh... Yeah, we'll see what this players choose to do. Um, we didn't introduce them. Yeah. In the top left-hand corner of the map, scouting with a probe right now. And you can see his probe on the screen. It is MC Minchu. And spawning in the top right position of Lara -like Crest. We have representing Samsung. We have the Red Zerg, Solar. Such solar, and this time not rocking the the yellow color, which is uh, the solar color, right? Is it? Well, he's been playing with solar. Oh, yeah, he has, hasn't he? He has, yeah. So, uh, very standard openers for both players. We'll see if solar decides to go into a third hatchery, or if he decides to drop a pool. Now, he knows that, uh, of course, like most people know that MC is a pretty aggressive player, but still... He's going to be confident enough to drop the third. Unfortunately for MC, he's going to be scouting Solar in Very the last. last possible location. Unfortunately for Solar, he also sent his uh, first Overlord the, you know, the wrong way. Not yeah. that there's any any way to tell which one will be the right way. But, uh, you know, advantages and disadvantages from the Overlord scout is if you, if you scout the way that Solar is scouting, you're guaranteed to see the natural and know where your opponent is. Mm -hmm. So, otherwise, you would most likely be scouting for the main, but then you run the risk of your opponent, a player like MC, going for an extremely quick stalker or something along those lines. So, that could be a little bit dangerous. Um, either way, MC is finally going to scout Solar. He's going to see a relatively quick gas. Uh, it looks like it was a gas pool opener. And this is, again, to account for potential to a depth pressure. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing a lot of that. We have seen a lot of that indeed, Taylor. So, want to elaborate or just... Well, I mean, that's like, it, two depths getting in every mineral line, they're so slippery and such that it's really hard for Zerg players, unless they have that speed, to deny it. And two depths do one-shot a drone. Mm -hmm. And we've actually seen that snowball out. But so far in this tournament, the turn uh, the Zerg players have been actually doing Especially with Solar, well. right? Like, yeah. Solar was great at He, he like, took no that, damage. That type of aggression. So, MC is still making a depth, uh, one adept, but most likely just for defense. Uh, he actually already has one out, so this is his second Adept. Uh, but just off of one gateway, he will be pushing out with this Adept and and, uh, and seeing what he, he can find. Maybe pick off a drone would be a, a, a victory for this Adept, for sure. And the scouting information, of course. Indeed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why Solar is scouting... Uh, Probably scared of a Stalker, maybe, that... Uh... Because in the other couple games, uh, MC after... I, I don't know if Solar even knows where MC is. Oh, wow. he does. I, I don't think he knows. Wow. Yeah, I, I think that Solar might be confused as off to where MC is. So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe just yeah, a little bit awkward. I, I think it's because he assumed that because the probe scout was so late, he had to be cross positions. But uh, MC's, MC's probe scout was actually early enough that he could scout, you know, two bases before exactly. getting to Solar. So, uh you know, Solar a little bit confused. It's not going to have any Overlords in position to scout a player like mm -hmm. MC. That's got to be really scary. I mean, MC already going for a very twi uh, very fast Twilight Council and the Adept uh, upgrade, to upgrade again. Yep. So he this, might this, go... could be, this could get tricky for Solar. Yeah. Uh, is the Robo... He didn't go for a Robo, so maybe this is just a classic board game. But these wings should be able to scout it. And there goes the Robo. I think he went... In the other games, MC went Robo after one gate and then put down the four gateways. So this is actually different, and it's a different build than what he's done in the past because he's always doing that five gate war prison pressure in all of his PVZs. Yeah. Um, but maybe just because it is solar, he's going to change it up a bit. A um, little yeah. bit more high, higher caliber of a player. Um, sure. I mean, uh, different approaches against different players. Maybe he he knows that Solar will hold his, his uh, you know, the type of pressure that he was going for. I mean, these players have played each other pretty often. 
on the Korean ladder. And uh, yeah, he's going for a more macro-oriented build, more, more tech-heavy build. We see that he's taking the extra two gases. So it's likely that he drops a Robo Bay soon and, and maybe hits into Disruptors. He's still going to try to apply pressure with this Adept and the War Prism. But uh, we'll see how much he's able to do. I mean, the, the Adepts already have their upgrade, which is going to increase their damage per shot. And that's going to be pretty nice against Broaches, especially as, as Lynx, you know, pretty yeah. inconsequential as, as they will still two-shot him. With this move out, do you think Solar over Drone? I mean, if you look at the worker count, it's 60 to 46. I mean, it's pretty significant, um, especially with this War Prism coming out. The push has got to be soon. So do you think Solar, I mean, he's making nine Roaches now, but is that even enough? Yes. So it's going to be whether the Adept can get uh, economic pressure done. Uh, I mean, MC is just looking to pressure here because I, I don't know that he wants to commit for, for an attack when he's been taking gases behind this and taking up as heavily as he has. Like, he's even adding a Forge, which is another uh, sign that he wants to go into a later game, and the Blink Stalker. So, yeah, I think Solar did the, the perfect job of, of just droning up just enough. Um, and, and MC was trying to kind of play mind games and, and, and tell Solar, hey, like... Oh, be careful. Uh, and these Adepts are going to find a little bit of damage here and there again. And MC just trying to apply pressure with his Adepts and, and warping in with the Warp Prism is, is going to make it difficult for Solar to split his army perfectly. Uh, these links are going to have a lot of trouble dealing with the Adepts. So Solar is going to have to pull back some Roaches. MC not really focused firing the drones, but Solar moving them and microing them regardless. Uh, MC is going to find a, a couple of more drone uh, kills. And the Adepts staying alive, or, or the Warp Prism staying alive, is going to make it so that Solar has to be pinned back in his base as he has three different places to, to defend yeah. against this, this Adept. So it's really hard to move out. He's doing it regardless. And uh, the Spire is now spotted for MC as well. Regardless, MC now, upon seeing the Spire, chooses to, to drop or, or continue to, to build the Rogue facility, which is a little bit surprising to me because you're not really, wanna gonna, or you're not really going to want to use it uh, against Muta for the most part. Right, like like anything that comes out of the robo is a, is a, gonna be a big a big investment in minerals and gas, and it's something that's not gonna shoot up. Yeah. So I'm also surprised that Solar is comfortable enough to be applying pressure here. That's that's really cute. Even if he forces out units by MC, uh, it's you know units instead of potential tech. So what he might be looking to do here is delay or deny MC the possibility to go for something like to to Stargate to to answer the Muta. Right. He similar to what um. Petraeus tried to do against MC. He's having some units out on the map to delay the attack from MC. But MC, upon scouting the Spire, is still going to decide to move out. So both players doing pretty much the, the proper things. But Solar has so much. And that is partly why, or, or partly because he droned up when, when, when you know, we, we said, like, is, is that, is that uh, correct? correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that allows him to have and as many units Taking out the War them. Prism with the Muta. Yep, something that uh, that previous opponents of MC failed to do, and, and you know that makes it so that MC cannot reinforce this army. So he's gonna have to sit back and uh, be defensive here. And I'm surprised that he's continuing yeah. to engage here. He really needs to get out. He needs to fall back to the pylon. Yeah, the pylons are really powerful, and now he's gonna get there. And uh, the mothership core, though, out of position. Solar identifying this is gonna go for it right away. He has to commit for this mothership core. No more pylons to help out. He can just wait for the photon overcharges to, to wear out now and potentially overwhelm MC right now. Again, MC got a robotics facility, but he's not seeing any use out of that because mutas are out. So uh, you want to account for those. You need Blink Stalkers out. He's remaking the Mothership Core. That's going to be instrumental in, in, in his defense here. But Solar jumping from base to base right now with his muta. What a great job by yeah, Solar right now. Absolutely. And at this point, MC can't really leave his base, and the War Prism's taken out. There's no way to counter her ass. So he pretty much has to stay in his base and just defend. And this is actually, like, Solar's taking his fourth. He's just gonna play. He's actually gonna push in here. Um, yeah, and there's so the many second links. War Prism got I mean, taken out. That's huge. Yeah, there's there's no reason for Solar to continue to make Roaches at this point, other than to dump uh, more minerals and, and, you know, spend his larva more efficiently, because... Solar, or, or MC, is not able to make uh, as many Adepts as he would like to deal with the links. So Ling Muta is pretty much going to be great here, but losing a yeah. few Muta, I, a few more than more than he should yeah. have, that's that's going to allow MC to potentially stick around. But uh, this base will actually be taken down, and, and never mind that. With that, Solar is going to take a two base lead as soon as his fourth is done, and that's gigantic, Taylor. Absolutely, and there's like no point for Solar actually be aggressive anymore. He can just come back, and pretty much MC has to go and attack him, and pretty much just try to kill him. Yeah. And, and it's not gonna work. Yeah. Look at this, like Solar, like I was saying, like he has no more reason to make roaches. Links are gonna trade so effectively against stalkers with the unit that it's just, 
nothing that MC can do from uh, that point on. So great job by Solar. Yeah. Really, really clean game. And uh, MC's mind game's not working quite as well as he was hoping no. as uh, Solar droned through it. And he was like, you know what? Like, I know that you're an aggressive player. Mm -hmm. But, but I'm going to get to the I'm economic scout. position where scout I have to just defend perfectly. Right, like like he's he's just that good. Yeah. That, and he scouts it, and, and he's like, I, I know I'm playing you, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Like, you took the extra the extra two gases. Mm -hmm. You can't really be aggressive before you use those, right? Um, so you must be gearing up yeah. for a later game. I'm going to drone up. It's so it's such a confidence mood that he made 10 drones, and I was I was going to question. I was like, he's I think you he's over question yeah it, he's getting he's over droning and then and then I was it. like, no Taylor, he's not. So, yeah, but it's good that you question it because some people might have the same questions. Yeah, exactly. Too, you know? Yeah, because I'm just an NA player. I don't know exactly. And, and yeah, we went over this at dinner. We did. And <laughs> please try not to spit on my arm next time you laugh. Did I? Yeah, but I'm it's sorry. okay. No, it's cool. Fart, spits, I mean... Are you a llama? A llama? A llama? A llama? Llama. A llama? Yama. La yama? Yama. What's a yama? Llama. Llama. Yeah. Llama properly pronounced is yama. Oh, okay. That's the name. Call, That's call, the actual name we of We call the them animal. llamas in, in America. Llamas in America. Well, you don't have llamas in America, <laughs> so I call them llamas because they're from Peru. And... We are loaded into the second map. God, this map is awesome. What's it? What's the name? Taylor? Dust Towers. Dust Towers. <laughs> what a map! In the bottom side of the map, we have from Samsung Galaxy Can, the one true Zerg right now, Solar. And spawning in the top position, representing himself, it is the Red Protoss. Hashtag retired MC. You did quotation marks with your hands, but you said <laughs> no hashtag. No saw that. <laughs> Shut up. I was going to say quote, but I don't know why I said hashtag, but thanks for, thanks for uh, cool, letting the cool. viewers no, know yeah, that I'm an idiot. I gotta, I, yeah, I got to let people know, you know? So, um, yeah. Solar taking the base at the front. Now, this is something that, like, it, it, it indicates that he's probably going to go for three hatch before pull, but this is something that I've thought a lot about and, um, you know, something that I'll probably, like, tell Solar, but, but just, like, because the two of that pressure is so common right now, mm -hmm. I actually prefer taking the, the base in the back first. Um, a lot of the time in Legacy of the Void and on a map like this, I would definitely take the base in the front first, especially because the distance that you will have to transfer drones uh, to is, is fairly short Yeah. Um, to either base. So having the base first in the front makes it so that you can spread creep faster and you still have like just one base to defend at the front. Plus, if that base gets cannon rushed or pylon rushed, as unlikely as that may be in Legacy of the Void, uh, you would rather lose that base and, and secure two easy bases that are easy to defend and, and, and do something else with your, uh, you know, with, with, with the position that you're in from, yeah, from exactly. the run. So the reason that I prefer taking the base in the back rather than the base that Solar took first is double adept pressure. Um, because a lot of the time against double adept pressure, it's good to evacuate your, your you know, your third base. Mm -hmm which at this point would, or in this case, would be the entry point. And if you take the third base first, like the, the base that Solar took first, that means that you're going to have more drones on it and therefore lose more mining time if you have to evacuate it against the, uh, double depth pressure, which is the more common opener yeah, compared exactly. to Cannon Rusher or whatnot. But so. we see MC going for the Zealot, and we're I think it's a Twilight Council and then a Robo. Mm -hmm. And he, he did the five-gate pressure with the War Prism almost every PVZ on this map. Actually, every PVZ on this map, he's done it. So I think it's his go-to build, and yeah, it's, there you go. The Stalker, he's going to try to prevent scouting from the Overlord. But if Solar is paying attention on those previous games against the other Zerg players, he's got to assume that this is coming. Yeah. And Solar, once again, very prepared for the Adept Pressure regardless with, with the gas right after the, the third hatch before pool and, 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 and before the pool. So uh, that's going to work out well for him. Now, the problem with MC's build at this point in time is that he's denying information, but he's repeatedly done Been the same doing, thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, I mean, at this point, you have to pretty much expect and account for, you know, his build order, yeah. which is like, you know, it, this is this is uh, one of the things that like wh when you do well on ladder with a build, you, you can do it repeatedly because you'll be playing different opponents all the time. But in a tournament, doing the same Literally build order is... Literally it over yeah. and over and yeah, over it's, again. it's just what you have to account for at that and point, he, right? And Solar doesn't even have to suicide the Overlord. He just can assume. Like, we've seen a couple of people try to suicide that Overlord, just get the scouting in. But this has been repeated, what, three times? Two times. No, against Petraeus, against uh, Jim, Jim Rising, Rising, and against Solar himself. Yeah, so. exactly. So, um, he's got to expect this is uh, coming, and we'll see how he defends it. 
because the other Zerg players, I mean, he did defend extremely well that first game that we had. Indeed. Um, but this is his go-to. Like this, he hasn't deviated from this. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I'm really interested to see if Solar's gonna be able to defend it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, like Protoss is. If you're just getting into StarCraft and, and you're trying to pick a race or even switch races, uh, Protoss is a race that excels at having multiple paths and multiple build orders that work, multi multiple tech options. So a lot of the time you, you set the pace of the game in a Protoss versus Zerg, for example, because you're denying information, it's, it's not hard to do, and then whichever tech path you go for is kind of a, a commitment. It's, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be an all-in. But it's a heavy commitment, and it becomes a lot stronger when it's un uh, when, when it's unscouted, yeah. right? So Protoss is a, a mind gamey, tricky race, and when you do the same build order over and over again, it's less and less likely to work because your opponent will begin to account for it. Yeah. Um, you know, on the flip side, Zerg is the most reactive race because of how um, how our production facility yeah, exactly. is set up. Like you need just one building, and with one building. Um, you're able to you know produce multiple units you can make drones all at once mm -hmm. and uh and and that makes it so that zerg is very flexible in what they do and, now, and solar and isn't actually morphing the ravagers which is what the other zerg players have done and he also took the third base first so the creature has actually pushed out quite well but that's a like do you he only has five roaches and he's, he's making he's reactive links oh no wow suicide the adept's essentially mc there uh pressure must be getting to him i mean solar already so ready for this and maybe mc not paying attention to uh how many roaches solar had there but uh he's gonna be able to maybe do some pressure onto the third anyway focus fire in the queen is not what he wants to no, do he has to get drunk. it may not even die no yeah it will oh focus fire it now okay. oh okay. there we go I mean, he. I think Solar kind of baited him. He only had five on, roaches at the, the third. third. In the third, in the meanwhile, and there's uh, more pressure going on. But MC not being able to pull Solar apart. Is, is no well damage see. done. Yeah, one drone fall. Yeah, That's, not not just not enough. And Solar already with a spire on the way and a healthy drone count uh, is also gonna scout MC's follow up into Blink, which is kind of his safety net uh, against Spire. But not taking any damage from this and yeah. shutting down as much as, as as he did. Like he invested. Like in not in that third CC, he got those four extra gates. So obviously he's he is behind. Like oh, absolutely. And Solar knows this, so he's not only going for Muta, but he's also taking a fourth. Something that is kind of unusual, um, because usually you want the Muta to grant you map control. You want to have the Muta out on your opponent's side of the map, and then you can take a fourth behind it. But he's so confident here that he can defend after shutting down the aggression of MC as easily as he did, that he's just gonna take a fourth even before making the Muta. So. The muter are gonna come out, and and that's gonna be the, that's gonna be it for this war prism as well. So MC in a really difficult position already. Yeah, and I mean the gateway explosion is coming in from MC. I don't expect him to try to take a fourth. Like maybe he's gonna like he is obviously scared of muta. He will probably just try to power up on three bases and then make a really really strong push, trying to end it like he's done before when he's seen muta, just because. When, like, this happens, if Muta are at your base... Yeah, but it's too late for... Oh, oh, he's still actually going across yeah. the map, but... Uh, and Solar's actually gonna pull back to defend. He's just gonna be like, I have enough to defend this if I bring that my Muta forward, so... And, oh, War Prism doesn't get taken out, but the Muta will come back and probably just snipe the War Prism, yep. as we see right here. That he's gonna do. And oh, and the Warping doesn't go through, oh, so wow. that's huge. That might just be game. MC. With the same build again, I mean, he really needs to uh, start switching it up here. Yeah, I think he needs to adapt his build a tiny bit more. Uh, but Solar's just been on top of it, reading it. I mean, on this build, you can probably assume, but that first game, like, he's just been on top of it this game. Or just the series. Yeah, Solar, I think, um, it would be odd. <laughs> like, it would be funny if Solar actually only drops a... Uh, uh, or doesn't drop a, a map in the finals after dropping a map against both you Thermal and uh, yeah. Snoot in, yeah. in, in his respective best of threes. So now it is good to point out that Solar has always been really, really good at CVP. It's always been his signature matchup. He's, he's just really good at adapting and, uh, and, and it's showing. I mean, he, he just knows both races as well enough that, that he can, you know, adapt as well as he is. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure what MC can do from this position on. He's behind in tech, he's behind in economy, he's behind, he's in behind, behind in army, he's behind in drone count or, or worker count. So, yeah, it's gonna be a, a mountain to climb against a player like Solar. Like, uh, um, MC will, nev will never be able to move across the map. Um, 
And as we see, look, Solar, he could just stay back and drone up and just tech up a little bit, but he's just gonna go in and force MC to keep warping in, and he's gotta be very vigilant with these, uh, with the stalkers, just cause the, he, uh, Solar's at a mute account where he pretty much just one-shot probes if they get into the mineral line. You think he will one-shot probes with, uh, 16 meter? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty close. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think he could one-shot probes as well, for sure. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna take care of the mothership core, which means I, I would like for him to just pull back here, really, because there's there's oh okay the photon overcharge is done, so might as well just engage. But um, yeah, this is just gonna be lights out for MC, I think. Uh, Solar not attacking with all of his ravagers, which could be doing additional damage, but I don't think that's even gonna matter. Uh, even if, even if he completely loses this army, there's. Just the reinforcements are, are going to be plenty. No Mothership Core out for MC and barely any units left over. So the boss toss is going to have to GG here pretty soon. One shotting probes all over the place. I know, right? It's like, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. So, Taylor, why don't you sell people onto your race? What are the strengths of Terran? Why, if someone wants to play, like, StarCraft, why should, what should, why should they play Terran? I think, well, you explained it last night perfectly where it's like your kind of mentality going to the game if you want to be like precise with your build orders like protoss is a really good race reactively i think zerg is the better race for it just because how the hatcheries work and if you're a very good mechanical player then terran is obviously there for you i know when i first started playing starcraft i just played the terran campaign and that's pretty much why i started playing terran i'm sure a lot of players are like like that um but you, I mean, might as well just try all three and see which one suits you. It's like your your personality. Like I'm a Terran player, and yeah, you know, I like, like uh, yeah, I, I would say that Terran is uh, pretty build order focused and and kind of just all about execution, right? Yeah. Like we saw Polt pretty much get as far as he did with just like a couple of build orders or one build order per yeah. matchup. Terran excels at that sort of thing, kind mm -hmm. of accounting for everything. Where yeah, Zerg is a little bit more reactive, and and Protoss is usually more tricky now be that being said they're less tricky in legacy of the void and a little more uh straightforward, straightforward yeah yeah because we've seen mc literally do like almost the oh same yeah build, like yeah. every time he's just confident in the build but his confidence has to be shattering if he has another build a, a surprise uh now's the here, time now, now's the time this to pull it out this potentially could the be final yeah, game potentially of this the tournament. final game of this tournament yes thank wow. you for repeating me it's like you're echoing oh wow it's, it's like that much echoing, more epic and it's that much more epic x coin is the greatest and Central Protocol is going to be the next map between Solar and MC. And we have spawning in the top right position, representing Samsung Khan. It is the Blue Zer. Can you close out this tournament? It is Solar. And spawning in the top left, representing himself, is the Red Protoss. Can he get back into the tournament? It's MC. This is the closest rush distance out of any map in the map pool in these positions, I believe. I think it's, uh... Oh, actually, no. Never mind. It's, it's uh, top to bottom is the closest. Yeah, this is, this is, is a little bit farther away. Yeah, top to bottom is, like, two screens between naturals, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, this is actually a little bit uh, better for solar, potentially. Now, that ramp is kind of hard to wall off. Um, so, even baneling busts are kind of decent at the, on, the, on this map. So... Also, the third base is really, really far away, far, yeah. so that could that could prove difficult to defend if uh, MC commits to maybe a, like a two base all in. Yeah, I think it'd be really strong here. Yeah, I think that this might be MC's map right here. I'm calling it Taylor. Okay, you're calling it. Okay, well, I'll just go against you since I've always done that. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you owe me five bucks for going <laughs> against me, so. What do you want to put five bucks on the line? No, like really? I'm, no. So you, not solar. Okay, fine. Well, I mean, like, I've, I've just lost, like, every bet that I've had, like, since yeah. I've been here, so it's, mm -hmm. uh... It's unfortunate. Yeah. You know? So we have Solar going in here with the Overlord Scout, scouting MC first, and it's gonna put... Uh, he was considering backing away, but he decides that uh, MC has probably already seen the Overlord, so per perhaps Solar not paying as much attention as he would have uh, as he would have liked. If uh, MC... Or, or if Solar had been paying a close attention to that Overlord, as soon as he sees red on the minimap, he should, he should be able to, to pull back and, and not not give the, the scouting information to his opponent. Regardless, MC had already pretty much scouted the entire uh, all map, over the map, yeah. so it, it doesn't matter too much. It just saves him a 
tiny bit of time of, of poking into the into the second natural, but yeah. We see that Solar on this particular map chooses not to go for the for the three hatch before pull mm -hmm. and gets a much earlier speed. So. And MC's build is pretty much the same without the expansion. Like he's going for that Zealot and then he's going for the Stalker. He's not going for a Twilight Council, so maybe he's going to get, what would you say, like, uh, Mortals? I would I would think an Immortal Link would be really powerful in this map, um, especially going towards that ramp in this. And the Sentry kind of hints towards that further. Mm -hmm. uh, immortal Sentry is going to be really strong. I haven't seen it uh, executed in this map, really, especially off of one base. But, again, MC needed to switch it up. He hasn't taken a Nexus yet. And he is he's in a position where if he rallies towards Solar, the closest possible distance is going to be his rocks. And also those rocks, upon, upon being taken down by Immortals, which is what I'm guessing he will do, mm -hmm. uh, is going to make it a lot easier for him to, uh, to to hold that choke, right? So he's going to start off with a War Prism, potentially um, to apply some pressure, maybe with Adepts or, or maybe even... I don't know, like uh, like the Sentry is not going to come in too handy here because you can't really force heal yeah. the ramp. Because the ramp is so wide, it would take like two or three force fields. I think just two. So do you think um, MC's going to go into the natural and then then the main? Or do you think he's going to break down those rocks at the main base I, and I go straight into the main? I think he's probably going to break the rocks on the, on the main as that is the chokiest area where sentries are going to Is that a two force field or is that three? That's like perfect two, right? Where? Uh, between the main and the natural force field wise? Uh, I think it's perfect two. Okay. Um, but so, Link do get in. They're going to actually get a scout. So Solar, he knows what's coming. It, yeah. And this is actually interesting. Ooh, He's getting wow. a Robo Bay on one base. Uh, this could be either Colossus or Disruptors. If it is Disruptors, he's going to have to rely on them so heavily to hit that uh, I'm not sure if that's the right call. So maybe Colossus. Colossus are pretty good in, in chokes. Um, Solar did make a lot of links that he potentially didn't really need to make as early as he did. Maybe yeah. he was anticipating something like a 4-gate all-in. Um, Which is possible on this map. It's definitely possible. And I'm curious to see if MC will break his own rocks because that will, again, give him the, the fastest path towards solar. Like, Did MC... I'm pretty sure he made an immortal, right? Okay, he's, so he's he making... skipped the first immortal and went for the war prism instead. Yeah, of course. Okay. No, because he was making an immortal first. Was he? Yeah, he, he was. And that's why I, I was set immortal bus. Or I'm, like, 80% sure. No... But he's getting a disruptor, like you said, so it's gonna be a hit or miss. Like literally, mom spaghetti. Like it needs to be a good disruptor. And uh, actually, Solar's drone count is so low. I wish MC had focused a little bit harder on the drones for Solar because right now, Solar wants to be producing units, and if he's forced to produce more drones, that could be the end of him. Now he is MC is going for disruptor, so a pretty risky strategy. If the disruptor gets a good shot off, that could be huge. If not, that could be terrible for yeah. him. And keeping this war prism could be really important as well because he could apply pressure with the disruptor onto Solar's economy um, before committing for the attack and, and maybe just you know kind of wait until he has enough army for it. So we'll see how he chooses to use this disruptor. Oh, Taking wow. down nice. that creep is That's nice. A, yeah. Yeah, like Solar is 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 gonna want to have extra uh, larva injects. Yeah. So that's that's a little bit difficult. And NMC is actually taking the, the long path out towards uh, Solar's base. And we'll see if he goes for those rocks. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't utilize the architecture of the map to his favor here. And oh, he's actually wow. Oh, wow. That's actually... Yeah. Is the motion for home? home? Yeah, oh, he had to home. recall. Damn. But that's essentially all in from MC. Like, he's oh, got... Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's not paying attention. You gotta pay around. attention, though. Oh, and the disruptor yeah, shot, disruptor. it does get a good hit. Yeah, that's actually, that is good. actually... Didn't save it. That, that was pretty big. The disruptor shots don't do as much as uh, Solar would have hoped for. But uh, is this going to be enough? It's it's, it's going to be, be close. close there's, yeah. there's three or four... Th there's three transfuses available almost. Uh, two and a half right now, maybe three now. So uh, Adept's being warped in, and, and mm. that's going to help tank uh, damage for the Immortal while, while the, the Immortal tries to focus fire the Roaches most likely. So uh, we'll see how this ends up going. Ravager shots just zoning out and uh, buying Solar some more time. 14 links in production might be exactly what Solar needs to shut this down. And I think we might have a quick 3-0 for Solar in our hands. MC is going to GG. And the champion of the World War III is going to take it. Solar. So if you were curious on how World War III was going to finish, Korea wins. it was going to be Korea in first, second, and third place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did you make that up on the spot? Yes. Yeah. 
because I'm clever like that. Yeah, yeah. so clever. So uh, I've been joined by X Kawaiian. You can follow him on Twitter at X Kawaiian. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Rob from Production. You can follow him on Twitter at Kavik TV. You can follow me on Twitter uh, at Ruth Katz. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, this was really enjoyable. And thank you for, you know, yeah, showing up and, and supporting us and our sponsors. If you further want to support Ruth Gaming,